One of the most neglected topics among banjo players is endings. It might not be the most exciting thing to practice, but if you don't have a solid ending for the song that you're playing, then you're not going to be comfortable playing on stage or in a jam. So today let's go over a bunch of really cool endings that you can use on different types of songs in a bunch of different keys. Okay, real quick, before we get started, do me a huge favor and do these two things. And that's subscribe to this channel and like this video. You wouldn't believe how much that helps me as someone who makes videos like these on YouTube. And it's because of subscribers on YouTube and on Patreon that I'm able to make these videos. So more subscribers, more likes equals more videos for you. And if you do those things, then stick around to the end of the video to find out how you could win some free banjo strings. Anyway, let's learn some endings. We're going to start with endings that work best for vocal tunes. That means you're going to be able to play them at the end of songs like Blue Ridge Cabin Home or Nine Pound Hammer. To start off, here are a bunch of endings in the key of G. As banjo players, we spend a lot of time playing out of a G position, but we should be prepared to play out of C and D positions as well. So here's some endings that work both in C and D. In bluegrass, there are often different endings for instrumental tunes. The main difference being that instrumental endings are four bars long as opposed to two. These are endings that you could play at the end of tunes like Cripple Creek or Pike County Breakdown, or fiddle tunes like Whiskey Before Breakfast or Temperance Reel. Again, let's start with some endings in the key of G. Thank you. 
here are some instrumental endings that will work in the keys of C and D. Okay, that is a lot of endings, and you don't need to learn all of them. In fact, if you listen to players like Earl Scruggs or J.D. Crow, you'll hear them play the same endings over and over again, and that's fine. But as a well-rounded bluegrass musician, it's a good idea to have a couple different endings that you can play on different types of songs in a couple different keys. Once in a while, the argument is made that bluegrass all sounds the same. And it can. If you play it the same, then it will sound the same. But as you can see from all of these licks, there are actually a lot of different options and they all fit pretty well within the scheme of relatively traditional bluegrass. So if you play a song like Nine Pound Hammer, and then a song like Blue Ridge Cabin Home, both out of a G position, you really don't have to play the same ending at the end of both of those songs. And the differences between some of these endings are pretty subtle, and that's one of the things that I appreciate the most about bluegrass, that for a style that is apparently relatively simple, there's actually a lot of nuance. So if you're looking for the tablature for all of these endings, then you can find that in a PDF format at patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post all the tablature and bonus practice tips, live streams, all kinds of extra stuff that you can't get here on YouTube. And if you got this far in the video and you're wondering how you could win three sets of any GHS banjo strings, all you have to do is comment below with what your favorite ending is from this video. One week from today, a comment will be randomly selected and I will announce the winner at the end of next week's video. So just make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.